Hello, this is TB back here at TB's Cabin. Just got home from Long Lake Resort this weekend. Had a blast with my sister and her husband. They came down. The kids all had to work. They're teenagers and just about ready to graduate. My youngest nephew is and my, my nieces are still in school, but they're working and everything, so they wasn't able to come down. They have jobs on the weekends. But anyway, we uh, did some fishing down at Long Lake, and that's what I'm uploading right now is a picture uh, or a video of what some of the stuff we did and rented a cabin for the weekend. It was a blast. It's been a long time since I had gotten out to do anything, and so we did it. Anyway, this is the machete I'm building and working on. And if anybody's got any ideas, has anyone ever did any uh, uh, welding off of a forge to put a to put a uh, hand guard on. That's what I want to know how we you do it. I know I could go get a, a welding a welder and just weld it on there, but I want to know if there's any way out there a person can uh, be able to weld this on here by using uh, the uh, forge is the idea and and getting the borax twenty team mule borax. Uh, borax uh, uh, solder or whatever you might want to call it and what I wanted to do I wanted I want to weld it on here and that gives this machete a hand guard you see what I did I took a piece of all this here is is just a piece of channel iron that I cut out in kind of a square like that it's not real fancy but or nothing like that I've rounded the corner so not to cut me and trying to smooth it up that way, but I uh, I think it's got a pretty good size hand guard that'll help to keep your hand, you know, out of the way of maybe falling brush or what have you, or something kind of help keep you from getting cut. Supposing you had to use this that blasted thing in a in a combat situation against uh, sword against sword, you know, more or less machete against sword. I would I wouldn't want them to get their blade into my wrist or my hand, and this is this will give me some protection. Now, granted, it's not a it's not a large it's not got a lot of you know hand guard there, but most of them don't. Like this one here, how I, what I did here, I just cut it with a grinder in the center uh, enough to notch it out where I could be able to slip it on over the handle. And I made the shoulders kind of square, but it's round here in these corners. But uh, this part here, I started when I first made uh, laid it out by eyeball. I didn't even, I should have drew this out better and cut it straight by a line, but I didn't. What I did, I just laid it out by eyeball. And I, what, I did have it on these corners here kind of round, let me get it down here and see it, kind of round, uh, round spot here and rounded over here and then I cut it out to almost a square but I left it round in those corners but when I slide this piece on so that it'll uh, go up again there I just, uh, I, I just wonder if anybody's ever uh, forged on a hand brace like this for your, or a hand guard I mean to be put on there, you know, on a short sword or machete, whatever you want to call it. But I made it primarily for chopping brush, because this one here, and it'll split, it chops a lot better than my the one I bought. I bought one for seven bucks, which is a little cheap pot metal, you know, it ain't very thick, and it'll cut a lot of stuff, yes it will, but this one right here, this machete right here, I can actually split some wood with it. I, I split oak the other day with it. Now, I'll be right back. I want to show you the handles I'm working on. That I found that they're kind of unique because it's driftwood that I, and it's oak that I got out of the, uh, I'll be right back. I'll show you. Got to work them down. Sorry about having to step out, but I forgot my handles. But these are the handles that I'm working on. Uh, they're oak. And I got them out of the river bottom off a piece of wood that I was going to burn. 
but I gotta work them down a little more here it's just a little thick yet uh, when you put the handles on now true I could just uh, put the handles right again that metal on each side and put rivets there and that would probably hold it there too but if a handle breaks out and you if you ever broke your handles uh, I would want this here welded or secured even if I have to get me a welding machine I'm going to secure it to where it'll stay put but I just wondered because back in ancient Rome times you know they didn't have no welding machine on their hand guards so I imagine that they they must have forged welded them on that's the only thing I'd figure. So you'd have something like this. See what I'm saying? But anyway, this is just a one-handed sword. There's not enough room, or a machete rather, that you you can't get both hands on this. Now next week, when I finish this project, I am going to start a, a to build me a sword, and I'm not sure what kind I'm going to go with yet. I kind of like the, the the style of the great sword that. Uh, Lynn Thompson's built up there. That's an awesome sword. Of course, I won't build it exactly like his because I do not want to, you know, I don't want to get into copyright uh, things or or trademarks or patents but or anything like that necessarily because I'm not going to make it to sell. I'm just thinking about making one to use. Now, someday I might want to make swords and knives. I want to get good enough to where they be decent weapons or decent uh, tools to use. Now this one here, I I like this this machete here. Uh, I built it mainly for like I say chopping big big limbs and brush out and I don't have to make as many whacks with this as I did with my lightweight pot pedaled machete. And what I like about this one, once I get this handle, this here handle put on, of course I've got to straighten my handles a little bit. I see one of them's a little little bit crooked but what I want to show you too up close here I don't know if you can see it but you see how that pattern is cut in there it's almost like petrified wood it's, but it's like uh, that's the way the water had run over it for some time you can just see where it, it, it made that groove in there here's another the other sides the same way actually these came out like this and I just cut them in two now what I need to do with this, I've got to square this up because this is coming at a kind of an angle. So I'm going to have to square it up. I'm going to have to finish shaving this down slowly. So hopefully I won't ruin these handles when I do. And when I get this part, this part here down, oh, I'm going to bring them all the way down to about a quarter of an inch thick. Probably right now they're about three eighths, probably or a little, not quite, maybe a full quarter in one end. The top end is about a quarter now, getting close, getting close to a quarter at the top part here, top edge of my handles. But uh, they got to be worked down. I'm gonna have to work them down slow because I don't have a belt sander. If I had a belt sander, I could really make some nice handles. But I don't have a belt sander. I don't have a. a um, well, a bandsaw. I don't have a jigsaw. Don't have a router. You know, so I'm just having to do this the slow way by hand and and using the wood rasp. And I've got a buck plane or such as it is a plane anyway. And it and it's been working it down. I've took my knife and I've I've took a hammer and chiseled off part of it off of here. Just literally chop chop chop. Now I thought about. I thought about taking and countersinking this, but but the problem is uh, if you take a, only a, a say an eighth of an inch out each side, because that's quarter inch steel, so you're talking about maybe an eighth of an inch to countersink it in there. That would be kind of hard hard to do without splitting this this wood. So I don't want to do that really. But but if I can bring this ends these the bottom parts in to match the top uh, top half I gotta work this bottom half in so it won't be so wide when you go to get a grip on it here I'm gonna show you what I mean I want it about like the way one of them is when I'm done but if you got any ideas on how to uh, forge weld uh, that uh, please subscribe to my channel up there uh, Thompson's Beef or Thompson's uh, survival cabin in this case 
I used to be Thompson's beef, beef and Thompson's beef.